Hey everyone, welcome to another um, episode of Learning to Play City Skylines with Rygar from Rygar Gaming. So today we're going to add a couple of more mods into our game. Um, and if you remember from the last episode, we looked at in detail how the Traffic Manager mod works. So we're just going to add another couple of mods. And we're going to add another mod which is a must-have for anyone who plays on the PC and has access to mods. So if you go to the description of this video, you'll find a link to my mod collection. Just click the show more button if you can't see it, and it should bring you to this page. So if we scroll down, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the chirpy exterminator. So that gets rid of the little annoying bird at the top, which puts out a whole bunch of messages as we play. I find the chirpy messages really annoying. So I'm going to so click on the plus if you wish to exterminate that chirpy. Um, I've already added it, so that's why it's got a tick here, but click on the plus if you wish to do that yourself. If you wish to leave it, that's perfectly fine as well. All it does is it gets rid of the chirpy bird, which we all love to hate, as the description says. Cool, and then the next one we're going to add in, if you keep scrolling down, we're going to add the Move It mod. So add the plus for the Move It mod to add that into your game, and this will allow us to... Um, be a lot more flexible in how we can uh, design the game and place things in the game and so on. Now in when you go to the plus for that it needs a couple of extra mods um, to be installed as well which is the prop precision and the prop snapping. So just um, add those as well it should um, ask you to add them in automatically once you subscribe to move it um, and it'll put those in because it requires those mods for the move it mod to work. Sweet, and the other thing we're going to do is we're going to um, add in a new interchange asset because we're going to create a new interchange with our highway. So scroll all the way down and right down the bottom you'll see a link to Timbo's marvellous interchange emporium. So um, a player called Timbo has created a huge list of um, interchanges that we can have for our intersections. So there's a bit of reading if you want to read about um, his particular collection. And if you scroll down you'll see there's a massive number of different interchanges that you can play around with. So we're going to use the turbine interchange because I quite really like this one. So just click the plus to add the turbine interchange. If you want to add all of them click on subscribe to all and it will add all of them to your game. Just remember that it will load all those assets when you start the game even if you're not using them in the game itself. It's still going to load them all up. So you can see there's quite a few of them so that's going to take up um, some of your RAM memory on your computer. So if you don't have a lot of RAM memory then it's probably not a good idea to add in assets that you're not going to use. So you can always add more assets in later. So just maybe just add the turbine interchange for now. Sweet, so you can see there's a whole range of different interchanges that you can play around with um, later on. So we're just going to add the turbine interchange and then if you want to load up the game yourself and you can do this along with me um, and we can have a look at how these mods actually work. So if we go to the game, right so remember at the end of the last episode we had a massive build up of trash because um, I was so busy uh, playing around with the traffic manager mod I'd completely forgotten about a trash situation and all our landfills became full so they stopped sending out trash trucks. So you can see that with a trash build up, which is probably good good thing to see what happens is that we start to get six citizens so if I can find some six citizens somewhere here we go some citizens over here going to get the the um what, what would you call it a happy face with a little thermometer poking out so if you click on that building put your mouse over the icon it says that citizens are falling ill because the ground is polluted removing pollution buildings nearby uh, remove pollution buildings nearby or offer more health care. Now we could offer more health care but the main reason is that we've got a massive build up of trash. So if we go to the pollution view you can see that there's kind of a brown tinge around this area because of the trash build up whereas over here it's completely white. All right, so you can see that the trash is causing your pollution to build up which is causing your citizens to become sick. So once the, tra the trash gets removed eventually your citizens will get better again. Um, so that will uh, fix that up. So um, I've added two um, landfill sites over here, so two new ones. So they're going to put out a huge number of traf uh, rubbish trucks. They will start to go around and just collect up all the rubbish. And as they do, 
um, the abandoned buildings so if you go click on abandoned building and go to the icon it'll tell you why it's abandoned so this is abandoned because there was too much garbage um, around on that particular property so again as the um, traffic uh, the rubbish trucks will collect the rubbish they will get rebuilt into proper farms again so don't worry too much if you get too many abandoned buildings if you fix up the problem then um, they'll get moved in again so we'll just start it playing um, so that the rubbish trucks will start going around and collecting up all the trash so what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, look at how the move it mod works so you can see that the chirpy exterminator works because chirpy is now gone yay uh, no more annoying messages from chirpy so what we're going to do is learn how the move it, uh, move it mod works and we're also going to curve our um, highway around here and we're going to buy a new tile and connect this highway to this highway as an interchange. So currently if there's any trucks that need to get into our city they have to come from the right hand side all the way down here all the way over here through this interchange and then down through our city. It will be kind of cool if we had an interchange here so they can just take a shortcut come into the city people on this side can get to this interchange and that way it provides more access and it will actually alleviate the traffic around that particular interchange as well uh, which is a good thing all right so the move it mod you'll find is uh, just down here next to the bulldozer right you can um, no you can't move it oh well, never mind so it's just down here um, i think if you press m that will also show up the icons for the move it mod when you click on the icon it brings up the tools click it again the tools go away right so we'll just go through the tools and kind of see what they do Okay, so at the moment we've got a single selection selected so what that does is allows you to select a single um, prop or asset or building or road segment um, in the game and you can move it around so we've got our two um, uh, storage outlets that's sort of the word I'm thinking of um, we can click on it and we can just kind of move it around cool and if you go control Z it undoes what you do so that's a really nice feature of the move it mod so if I move this to here then move it to here I can go control Z twice or actually it just does it once it puts it straight back to where it was so I could move this here and then move that one there go control Z that moves that one over there control Z again and that moves that one back to where it was so you've got multiple levels of undo and if I go control Y it redoes what I did uh, before or what I undid so that's quite cool so you can redo with control uh, you can undo with control Z redo with control Y and it just gives you much more flexibility so if you did something wrong and move it you can just undo it um, to help you fix that up all right so single selection mode means you can so I don't want that rock there anymore I can select it move it somewhere else and right click and then unselects that particular thing. you can also select trees cool and you can select multiple ones but in single select mode by holding the shift key down so select once hold the shift key down we can select multiple trees now and then we can click and move with the left button and we can move all of those around right click and that kind of unselects them so you see we've got some trees underneath our um, highway we can just move them off because it seems a bit odd to have some trees growing around there but maybe you want you like that that's up to you and we can move them out there we go rather than having to bulldoze them sweet so that's the single select mode um, this um, icon here is the toggle snapping so at the moment when you move it's very smooth and freeform okay um, if we toggle snapping then it moves you it moves kind of with the grid so it's, it's, it's a bit more jerky uh, when it actually moves okay so you can see it's more jerky so it's kind of toggling to the grid and you can um, toggle the grid on by doing that and you can see you've kind of got the grid here so you can see the tree moves snapping to the grid even though you can't see the grid out here it's still toggling snapping to the grid itself okay so that's what toggle, toggle snapping does um, this one here is to follow terrain so we'll look at that a little bit more when we play around with the roading system and so on now let's just have a look at some of the options in the move it mod so if we uh, not there if we go to the settings and then go to options and then we have the move it mod options here 
so if you want to support the person who created the mod and um, all credit goes to that person then feel free to donate um, so options auto close the toolbox menu um, so that will just auto close the move it mod menu when you're not using it up to you if you want to turn that on or not um, prefer fast low detail moving so when you select a whole bunch of things and you move them it'll move move it at the highest resolution that your game is set to but that can if you're moving a lot of stuff at the same time or you've got a lot of things loaded in your game that can cause things to jerk around and slow down so what you can do is tick this um, so that way when you're moving it, it the things that you're moving are just moved in low detail um, and so it means that um, it should be a bit smoother when you move things around so I normally keep that on, keep that on. use compass movements um, so if checked the up key will move in the north direction down as south left as west right as east so if you use the keyboard to move things around you might want to check that if you want to move in the compass directions right click cancels cloning um, so normally when you right click it will rotate um, if you select this it will just cancel cloning rather than allowing you to rotate um, I don't really bother with that uh, use advanced pillar controls it allows fine control of pillars and pylons the game will not reset the position but can cause terrain glitches that causes um, that requires surface painter to remove so that's kind of a very advanced thing so we'll just leave that off at this stage um, you can play around with that later on once you become more experienced uh, and you can select pylons and pillars by holding the alt key only so obviously that's pretty straightforward um, I'm not going to bother setting that and then you can set the actual shortcuts for all the different actions in the game so if you want to change any of those things you can do that in there if you want to all right and then just leave all the extra things there we don't really want to muck around with that um, there was a thing to show the hints was that not there anymore no it doesn't seem to be there anymore oh well that's okay all right so those are the settings so if we go back so we've looked at single selection um, and so you can also do multiple selection using the marquee selection tool right so currently at the moment everything is selected so that means if we just click and drag it just selects everything that comes up right click and it deselects everything right or you can select some things oh I got that road I don't want just hold the shift key down click on it again and it unselects that so right holding down shift um, and clicking on the thing it unselects it if you just click once without holding in the shift it deselects everything and selects the thing that you just clicked on which is not really what we want all right so we can you know just marquee select and it selects a whole bunch of buildings and things as well right so right click to unselect so we got a um, what is that looks like a firehouse I can select that and I can move it off the road <laughs> so now it's no longer collected road. so you've got this uh, road icon here it's saying that that has no road access so I want to move it back so as you shift it back you can see that you can actually do more uh, it kind of lets you move it more into the road than what you had before it'll still connect to the road you can see the road icon is gone but um, it doesn't look very nice right so this is where the toggle snapping button comes in so if you select that it moves it to the grid so that means that it will actually snap to the grid and it will fit very nicely so toggle snapping is really useful when you want to move things which snap to the roads um, things like that okay so that's how the toggle snapping works now let's say you don't want to select everything I just want to select some trees then what you can do is just turn everything off and then just select the thing that you want so just trees right so now it only selects trees you can see we've only got trees selected so it selects these big trees and there's some small trees doesn't select the rock because the rock is not a tree a rock is a prop so if you select trees and props then that will allow you to select trees and any rocks and stones so there's a little stone here um, did it select that rock yeah I think it did so if we try moving it no it didn't select that rock hmm that's a bit interesting let's see why that didn't work so is it a decal nope 
surfaces. No, that's interesting. We can move it with the single selection tool, but it looks like it's a specialized type of thing. Is it a building? Uh, it seems to be classed as a building. You can see it's got a kind of a square to it, so the rock kind of is classed as a building, even though it's not a building. It kind of behaves a little bit as a building, that's why. Cool, so then we can select all of those, we can move them around, which is kind of cool. So if you select the things that you want, um, a really nice feature of Move It is you can copy things. So let's say that I like this pattern of trees and that rock. If we click the copy button here, you can see we now have a copy of it. If you left click, it now places that copy down. So that's really cool. So you can start to copy um, those things all over the place. And remember, you can go Control Z. Um, let's just turn that off. We can go Control Z to undo all of that, which is kind of cool. Alright, so that's how we can use the copy. And you can it's not just for trees and rocks. You can copy buildings as well. So if I wanted to make a copy of this fire station or firehouse, click the copy tool. We can see we're getting down the copy of it. Now you can see it, if I want to put it on this side of the road, it's not rotated correctly. So if you right click and turn, move your mouse around, it will um, rotate that for you. And then we've got snap to grid and then it snaps it on. And this is a completely independent copy of that firehouse. So it's a, this is, it would have, it's as if you just placed your own new firehouse here the normal way. Now you can see that it doesn't actually cost you any money when you place it. So I guess it's kind of like cheating a little bit using the Move It mod. But um, you know if that's the way you like to play, then that's fine, right? You're not playing against anyone. Play the game how you like to play. It's up to you. I don't tend to do that, but I do tend to use it when I'm copying... Um, trees and props and things to do detailing and stuff like that. So let's just delete that. Uh, and actually you don't have to use the bulldoze tool in the move it mod. It has a bulldoze icon so if you select the thing that you want click the bulldoze icon and it will actually delete that as well. Um, you might think well how's that different from the normal bulldoze tool? Well the cool thing is if we were to use the marquee tool to select all of those particular things and then click bulldoze gets rid of everything you've selected which is really awesome right um, so it's a very quick way of getting rid of stuff um, that you don't want to appear so you know I don't want these trees over here just select all of those click the bulldoze tool very quick way whereas, whereas with the normal bulldoze tool you actually have to click each one uh, we can't bulldoze outside of the city limits so that's another improvement of the move it mod but you can click hold the left button and move your mouse around and it will bulldoze as you go but it's much easier just to select everything and then bulldoze it which is really awesome now another cool feature of so using the copy feature we can do things to allow us to um, create uh, a forested area so remember when we talked about the landscaping tool we can use the brush to put down trees. Um, so let's say I want to put some trees in here. Let's just increase the brush size a bit. And that puts in some trees. I can create, put some other types of trees in here. So we can put in quite a few different types of trees, uh, which is kind of nice. But you'd have to keep doing that each time with for each tree. But what you can do, now that you have a good selection of trees, then if we choose the move it mod and then just select all of those copy it and now we can just it's got a nice pattern of trees that we can just kind of put in and of course you can rotate to give your trees a different uh, rotation and you can easily build up your own forested area so that you can start creating your own forestry industry as well as I said, it's kind of a little bit like cheating, but I mean, you can plant your own forest in real life, right? So it's kind of doing the same thing. The move it mod just makes it a bit easier than planting each individual tree. So again, let's just undo that. So 
so that's a really cool feature of the move it mod as well and actually we might just select all of those and bulldoze those cool so that's how we can um, pick out different things now when you're dealing with roads um, you want to use what are called nodes and segments so if we look at the straight road down here if we go to the road tool you'll see that we get these little circles which are the nodes so that's um, places where traffic makes decisions on what to do and you can snap to those um, parts as well which will snap to the road um, and then we have nodes all the way along the segments to allow traffic to make decisions um, and various things in the game to happen so with the move it mod if you wanted to kind of make this curve when it wasn't curved before so we want to choose uh, nodes and segments so you can see now we can select a segment here and we can then click on it and we can just drag it out cool and so you can um, add curves in we can drag it back in cool and if we have this um, toggle snapping turned on you can see that when it gets close to straight it snaps into place you can see that it snapped into place um, if we didn't have that on then it doesn't quite snap it right so it's very hard to get it correctly into place so toggle snapping on and it'll snap it back into place sweet so if we selected two segments by holding down the shift key um, then we can pull them both out like that but you can see the node in between those two doesn't actually move with them so we'll just undo that so what we can do is select the segment select the seg uh, segment and select the node and by doing that it moves all three at the same time and then we can get kind of a nice curve of curve effect there right if you just select the node only right click to unselect select the node only and move that you can see that it doesn't quite move correctly right all right so that's how um, nodes work so again if you select a node segment segment cl click on the node click on the node segment node segment node and then just pull them all out you can see what happens now it's moving all of them <laughs> right so we've selected all of them together so it allows us to move all of them at the same time which kind of has a cool effect uh, it will kind of stuff up all your roads and stuff but then you can bulldoze things and recreate them all right so that allows us to um, move all of them at the same time which is quite nice again if I wanted that exam exact same stretch of road we can use the marquee selection tool right and so you can see that we can get up to there but it hasn't selected these nodes over here so select that node select that node again we can copy it because we like that segment of road copy it we can place paste it and it puts it down for us now you kind of get weird things appear because of the terrain um, that you're trying to put things on so if things aren't quite totally flat things will go a bit weird but we'll look at how to fix those things a bit later on as well and can I undo that so you can see as you've selected this if you right click it will rotate it around for you cool so that allows you to position things correctly before you um, put it down and there is an option no nope, there wasn't an option to, to change the rotation level anyway uh, can't do that so we'll just delete it sweet all right so that's um, how we can copy and paste how we can select different nodes and segments you see there's a little button here if you click on that there's actually other things that you can select as well so roads tracks path fences power lines others you can toggle those on or off um, as well as what you want to do so now you know how to select different things um, using the move it mod all right so let's have a look at what some of these other um, things do so let's delete this segment of road here and in fact let me 
I might just save my game because you can see the rubbish has been started to be collected from our rubbish trucks and we've got much less people getting sick anymore so uh, let's just save that uh, so save my game call it Renville 8 sweet and then we can load that back up again if I muck things up too uh, badly all right so a cool thing you can do with the move it mod is um, let's say you got to here and you could just pull that road all the way along to the end here all right so um, select that node and then just left click and you can see how we pull it along now at the moment it's not following the terrain the terrain's going up so you can see that road is going underneath which is kind of cool <laughs> right you can see it's going to um, stay at the same level right that's because we haven't we haven't turned follow terrain on so let's undo that so if we go follow terrain and set the follow terrain tool to on that means as you pull it will keep it will stay with the terrain so you can now see it's actually going upwards um, up to there now you can see that it hasn't actually connected properly to this road because that truck turned around it's not co connected properly okay um, so yeah even that's not connected properly either whoops select that note bring that back bring that back to straight um, but what you can do is get it close to where you want and then you can just connect it normally um, you can also if you select that segment a road if you select this node you can turn and different angles rather than curving it just does and you can go all the way around to a right angle that's because we've got um, toggle snapping on turn toggle snapping off and it gives you much freer control but it doesn't seem to follow your mouse when you do that so that's a little bit more annoying so toggle the snapping on and it makes it easier cool so you can um, stretch things out turn things around do things exactly um, how you want them to be all right so that's how we do that um, what are the other tools that are really useful all right so if you want to move things to a particular height so let's say I want to make this node the same height as this node over here so select that node select that node there and then if you go to this button and go um, to object height you can see it now as you select instead of being blue or green it's got a white so when you click the white thing that you select on is the height to um, make the two things the same too so if I select that you can see that's now the same height as that over there sweet if I do it the other way and go uh, to object height and choose that that moves that down to be the same height as that one there now I think you can go control H and then click so control H is essentially that particular tool or you could select both of them so shift click and make the terrain height the height of this node over here so go control H select that node and they both move to the same height as that that doesn't look quite correct though <laughs> hmm that's a bit weird but anyway you can see how how that works but for roads it's a little bit different because um, because of the terrain the roads are on sometimes they don't always work um, exactly how you want them to be now let's say that we wanted to uh, we made a road which um, had an incline upwards so if I pull a road out go page up to go upwards and then pull out again and make this really high actually let's do so in the base game if you try and do something weird it stops you from doing it you can see it's red it says the slope slope the slope is too steep now remember um, well you might not remember one of the early episodes we added the fine road anarchy tool so you can see down the bottom we've got the fine road anarchy tool here so we can turn on and off different things we can turn off uh, we can toggle node snapping 
so that we don't get any node snapping we can also turn off road collision okay um, and it also means that it will allow you to do anything in the game so it removes all restrictions basically so at the moment anarchy is off you can see that a hasn't been selected if you click on it you can see I could do this if I wanted to right <laughs> I can create a massive incline uh, highway uh, road there um, so if you go control a it does the same thing so control a turns anarchy off control a turns anarchy back on again cool so if you want to make that slope a bit steeper uh, or a bit smoother we can use the move it mod select this node and we can go page up to make it go up and page down to make it go down all right so we can make it go up we can make it go down we could select this node pull it out to make it a bit nicer all right and let's say one of your a nice um what's it, a nice consistent slope from the top part all the way down to the bottom so this is where we can use our slope um, tool so select that so you gotta select the nodes select that node right, so one thing you can do with the movement mod as well is you can move nodes around so at the moment there's a node here but the next node is way down here so with the move it mod if we go to single selection mode and select that node I can actually move that right it's quite cool so I can move it along um, as far as I want it to go so let's put it back to here and we want a smooth slope all the way down so select that node select that node select that node go down to here choose slope objects and it creates a nice slope for you cool sometimes it's not quite exactly correct but then you can just use the move it mod and um, fix things up actually how you want it to be it's probably because that one's um, too close to this one here so if you move that over a bit and try that again so choose that choose that choose that uh, go slope objects and yep that's a much nicer slope across there right all right, so that's how we use the um, sloping tool as well. Cool, I haven't really bothered with these particular ones up here. So um, they're kind of very advanced things. So if you want to learn about those, um, you can probably look it up in the documentation for the move it mod. Now, the other cool thing is, let's say that, um, let's say that I really like this um, service interchange where it, provides access to our city from the highway so I really like that I want to be able to use it lots of times in my city so what we can do is use the marquee selection tool turn everything else off except for road segments and nodes and then we can just select all of that right so that's all selected and what we can do is we can make, export it and so it saves it for you so you choose export I've already got one created beforehand, so I'll call this um, Service 2 Interchange. Click Export and it saves it in for you. So now, if you were in another city or even in our own city, I want to put a new service interchange over here somewhere, then we can go to Import, choose the one you want, click Import and that's interesting why did it not do that import selection import oh it put it, it put it over the um, same place which is not what we want uh, so why did it do that I must have one of the settings is on It's interesting it didn't do it the last time I tested it huh. that is interesting so let's go import again oh maybe it didn't select the pillars um, oh, no, I think it did actually anyway if I try the previous one I did the very first one go import so it puts it there then if we move it yeah it didn't select all the pillars and things which is annoying let's get undo hmm oh well I'll come back to that in another recording uh, but anyway you can um, 
save your um, your nice things that you've got in your city and you can export them back in um, yeah apologies I don't know why that one didn't work it must be one of my settings but I can't figure out which one it is alright and the other thing is the underground tool so if we choose underground view then we can make changes to things which are underground right so let's say that I built a tunnel so let's do that first actually so that we can see it so if we choose a road so let's say that um, this road here is going to go underground so go page down and it creates a tunnel for us and we can go underneath that and then go page up and you can see that it comes up so go in here into our tunnel go underneath come out over here so if we go to the underground view then we can do the same thing but you can only select things which are actually underground so we can't select any of the other roads right we can only select these ones and then we can just do all the normal things we can do with the move it mod um, that we could do before sweet so that's how we can get into the underground view awesome all right so that's how all the different features of the move it mod um, and all the different things we can do all right so let's reload our game Renvo 8 Cool, so we're going to extend our um, highway um, out to here and add in the new uh, turbine interchange. Alright, just need some water. Alright, so we, this this is probably has to go because we need our highway to come through there. So let's just uh, delete this. Sweet, and we'll rebuild that later on. Alright, so the next step is we want to connect that to a highway going that way. So let's get our highway piece. Cool, so let's say we want it about here. Uh, snapping on, yep. Cool, put one there and then we'll build one the other way. Cool. Oh, we need to build it up. Damn it. That was a waste of money. Oh, but we can move it up. No, we can't move it up with the move it mod because it will lift the actual terrain, which is not what we want. So we actually want to prop it and build a bridge piece. So let's do that again. Go page up. What's the height of that? Yep, that's about the height. And we'll get the arrows correct a bit later on. So let's just bring this down a bit more. Cool. And we're going to make this curve all the way around to there. So let's bring this to here. I should want this a bit further in. Cool. So let's curve this around. So choose that tool make it line up with that, curve it in, sweet, bring this out to here, take this tool, make it line up with that, can, I, can we get to that one, here we go, it's not perfectly symmetrical, but, you know, I'm not too worried. I guess the gap over there was a bit too big. Um, but it depends on how fussy you are. As to how you like that. Although, now that we have the Move It mod, we can do that. So let's select... All of that. Oops, missed that. Let's just go undo. Let's do that again. So you can hold shift and then also do the marquee. Um, and then we can move that over a bit. Use this tool. Bring that in a bit. 
actually that was fine as it was yeah that looks fine sweet and then we'll just change the arrows around the other way There we go, and we want to get rid of this little piece in the middle here because we don't want them to turn around over there. <laughs> Alright, and then we're going to um, bring this in and we're going to create a new interchange there. But it would be good to have an off, a place to get off over here so that traffic can come from the highway, get off here, and then go into the farming district. So we really want to have a roundabout over here. And we're going to need a nice flat area as well. Oh, there's another place where that needs to change around. Here we go. Let's just bring this back a little bit. Sweet. We want to make sure that this is completely flat. So we use our terrain tool. Uh, Use this one, we'll select that, make the brush size a bit bigger, and just make that nice and flat. We'll fix that up a bit later on, as you know. Don't want to put that much. Let's reduce the brush size, reduce the strength. Sweet, and then we're going to use our roundabout builder. So go to the roundabout builder tool. Um, now before when we used it we didn't have the traffic manager set up, um, installed, so what we can do is go to the settings for setting up traffic manager and we want enter junction, uh, so allow vehicles to enter the roundabout um, with a block junction, we don't want that. Allow vehicles entering the roundabout to enter block uh, junction, we don't want that, we want no parking. We want priority signs, so roundabouts on our vehicles will give right away. We want that. We want to disable crosswalks. Uh, allow lane changing. Allow allow vehicles to change lanes at the junction, both on the main and entering roads. Mm, yeah, that should be fine. Sweet, so we want to do that. So let's go back. Now we don't have a connecting road to create it on, so we want to go into free cursor mode. Cool, and we probably want it to be quite big. Alright, so, uh, whoops, elevation should be zero, so that's flat on the ground, do we want it to be bigger even? Yeah, it needs to be bigger, doesn't it? Um, plus, 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 is that nice and big? Yeah, that's nice, let's do that. Alright, so let's put it roughly about there. Sweet, it uh, doesn't have to be too perfect for me, I'm fine. Then we're going to take our highway, just go straight across, and then we're going to connect up over there. So let's do that. So you can see sometimes, um, because where the pillars occur, you can't place the road exactly maybe where you want it to be. Um, so just kind of watch out for this, we'll do it there. So again, if it says space already occupied, if you go Control A to use Anarchy, then it fixes all of that for you, which is re really nice. Sweet, and then we'll just turn those arrows around the other way. Cool, and we want to do our off and on ramps, so let's do that. Um, so, let's do it from that node. Actually, let's do it here. Um, and yeah, this is too close for it to actually bend properly, so let's do it a bit further back. Alright, so we do it here. But I'm thinking, hey, that's a bit too short. We want it to be a bit further back. So again, you can do this with the Move It mod, remember. So select that node, and then just pull it back. You can see that it moves it back again. Then you just have to play around with this to 
get it exactly where you want it to be. Whoa, what's happened there? Oh, yes, the pillars are too close together, so that's went a bit too far. So I'll just bring it back a bit. Cool, and then it fixes it. Alright, so you can play around with the Move It mod to do things like that as well. Alright, so let's do the next Turn Move It mod off. Let's do that from here. And you want to connect to there. Sweet. And we'll leave that for later on. Cool, and then we want a big arterial road going up through here. So, actually, before we do anything, we should brace that roundabout. Because if I connect this to here, it can deform the roundabout. We can now use the Move It mod to fix it, but um, it makes sense just to um, brace it up. Again, use the Anarchy mod, and that will allow you to brace it up really easily so that you don't have to worry about anything, which is really handy. And then we'll just delete that later on. So we'll go back and add a big arterial road. Straight into there, and you can see it doesn't deform the roundabout. Um, Cool, and then we'll just get rid of the bracing. We can add the bracing back in again later on if we wanted to. Sweet, and we want to upgrade that into an arterial road as well. Awesome, so now um, they'll have two ways to get around and into our farming and our main city area. Cool, let that run so that the trucks can get free. Alright, so now we want to create our new interchange. So we're going to need to buy a new um, tile. Cool, so to buy a new tile, we go to this button here, the areas button. So each time you um, unlock a milestone, you'll be able to buy a new tile. Not for every single one, but um, it'll tell you when you can and can't. Uh, so if we choose this. It shows you the different tiles that you can now buy. So basically you've got a 9 by 9 tile that you can choose from. So there's 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So there are 9 tiles that you can do. So that's what the base game allows you to do. Because um, doing any more than that, if you don't have a, a fast or um, gamer type computer, it can slow things down a lot. Now you can have a mod which will unlock all of the map for you which is kind of cool. So we might uh, look at that later on. Alright so we're going to buy this tile here so that we can build up our forestry industry um, later on. So it can cost us $3,500 so really that's not much at all. So we can click purchase and you can see we can, oh so it's actually yeah there's another tile out here we can also buy. So you can buy only buy nine in total. It doesn't have to be an actual grid, a three by three grid. You can expand out this way, but you can only buy nine tiles in total um, for your city. But as I said, we can get a mod that will fix it. Later on, we want to get this tile over here because that gives us ocean access to the ocean in which we can have a shipping line. And we also have all of our sewerage or shit going down the river into the ocean here and that's not going to be a good look for tourists that are coming in so we're going to have to fix that up in a later episode as well <laughs> all right so click this but the areas button takes us back to the normal view and now we can connect up so we probably want an interchange here and it would be kind of nice to have an interchange over here as well all right because that way we can get in from this side and we can get in from this side so it just splits the traffic up so that you don't have a big bottleneck of all your traffic trying to get in through one particular position all right so we're going to use that new um, interchange that we added in through the asset workshop the turbine interchange so if we go into the road section and then go into intersections you'll find it in here so any interchange assets you add will be in the intersections um, section here. So you just select it, you can then have a look, see how big it is, and you can place it in. So uh, we're going to need to put it down here somewhere, but you, it'll, you can't just put it on top of those rows. We can only do it because probably Anarchy is on. Yeah, Anarchy is on. So we can see we can't do that. We need to delete those rows first, and then we'll put it in. So first thing, pause the traffic because um, we don't want the cars to get all screwed up. Then delete some of the roads. So we can't delete this one here because it's too close to the edge of the map. So this one here is the 
the closest one that we can actually delete. And you can see they don't quite match up for some reason. It's really weird, but I don't know, it's just the map is like that. Um, so just delete it as far as we need to. And then when we choose, choose this, so you can uh, rotate, click with the right mouse button to rotate, and then you can click and hold the right mouse button to get it exactly um, the orientation that you actually want. Right, so it's going to go in here somewhere, so that's roughly about level with that road there. So let's stick it there. That cost us quite a bit of money, that was $46,000, but luckily we've got quite a lot of money. Cool, so we put it in and then we just want to connect up um, our roads. So choose the highway road, oh, wrong one, and then connect that up. And it's okay if it's not perfectly aligned, but remember you can use the Move It mod to help you to make little changes to fix things up a little bit. There we go. So that's quite cool. It's one of the really useful features of the Move It mod. Sweet. And then we just want to connect this highway up to this one. So just going to kind of curve this around like that. So let's pull this one out first. Oh, sorry, whoops. Should have used the curve tool. So I'm going to use the curve tool. So 10 units, click. Ah, what happened there? Oh, I did a right click, not a left click. 10 units, click. 10 units, and we'll go down. Cool. So if so that way we can connect up to there. We'll do the same thing for this one. 10 units, turn around. No, this one's going to have to come out further because we need a gap in between. Oops, do that again. Actually, that gap, yeah, it didn't go down, that's fine. We'll redo that. So there is another tool, another mod that makes this kind of stuff really useful if you want to get things aligned really nicely, um, called the Parallel Road Tool, and we'll get into that a bit later on as well. That'll be good enough for now. And then we want to make this curve up and connect to this road over here. So we'll bring this out a bit more. And we can always fix it up with the move mod. Sweet, and then we'll just make the arrows go the right way. Boom, there we go. Sweet, all right, so now we've got um, this interchange. We probably need to put the on-ramps on now. Um, so let's do that, so we'll choose that tool. Uh, we wanna do it from, let's do it from here. Uh, from up there, we wanna connect that to there. And then from up here, connect that to there. Sweet, and remember we wanna use the traffic manager tool to make sure that this is all set up. Um, correctly. Again we should use lane mathematics so we've got three lanes one comes off so that means this along here should be two lanes so if we choose our two lane highway 
And where is it? It's over here somewhere. Four Lane National Road. Where are you? There it is, two lane highway, sweet. So upgrade that. So it says slope is too steep to upgrade it. So again, turn anarchy on, and Bob's your uncle. That does it for us, so let's do that. Boom. So we can see that that's really uh, nice there. We just need to fix up the lane arrows again. So that's coming on. That one's coming on. The rest of that is okay. Cool. And let's just check all our traffic manager stuff. So if you look at the roundabout here and look at the giveaway symbols it doesn't look like it's set it up for some reason oh because we didn't have any ramps and things on it that's why so it's best to put all your ramps and things connections to it first anyway so we'll choose that uh, we want to go uh, control click so no can shift control click and it does all the settings up for you so priority signals um, Cool. we just want to check the junction restrictions that we talked about in the previous episode so that should be going through that should be not be going through going through going through not going through so it doesn't allow you to come onto a block junction that's going through that's blocked very good sweet all right so that's all set up nicely we've done the lane mathematics which is excellent um, yeah there's nothing else we really need to do in fact yeah, we should probably have three lanes for our roundabout because we've got three lanes coming on. So let's upgrade that. And let's use the three lane highway. Cool, so it won't let us upgrade that one. Choose Anarchy. Let's us upgrade. Anarchy is such a cool tool. <laughs> All right, and then we'll just do the lane arrows. So just go um, control click and it sets up a dedicated turning lane for that one. That one's not giving us a dedicated turning lane, so we'll just have to do that one manually. Turn that off. So it's just turning off only. Sweet. We want to do control click. Again, it's not letting us do it, so we'll just turn that one off manually. Boom. So there's our roundabout done. Excellent. Excellent. So that looks really cool and we want to make sure that our turbine is set up correctly even though it's predefined for us um, we can do things like lane mathematics and stuff to um, make sure that things run nicely as well so again if we've got one coming off this should have two lanes so we'll choose our two lane highway there we go so that was from the extra roads that we added in a previous episode if you didn't um, already know so if you're on vanilla what you can do is you can make um, a four lane highway does it come with a four lane highway? I thought it did yeah so you can choose a four lane highway and do that and so from the three lane it just goes into four lanes just, just before the um, off ramp and then it gives you a dedicated turning lane. Sweet, otherwise um, we can achieve what we want to do with the normal highway and just go down to two lanes. Cool, so let's upgrade that and that and that and that and that. Awesome, still going. Down to there. That one there. So just get into the habit of doing lane mathematics yourself and it will really change a lot of um, problems for you. 
All right, so for this one, you could make this two lanes because they split two ways. But generally, if you're coming off, you're only coming off in the one lane. So I think that one's fine because there's no stopping here. You just go straight onto the one that you want. So that's perfectly fine. But over here, it's going to cause a problem because we've got a car coming in here and a car coming in here, and they're both trying to get into the same single lane. So what we can do is just make this two lanes over here. All right, so we don't have a two lane highway ramp, so you can just make it a normal two lane highway. So just upgrade that, and then we can use the lane selector tool to, uh, or the lane connector tool, I mean, to do that. So this, anyone in this lane can only go here. Sweet. And anyone in this lane can only go here. So that way they're not going to interfere with each other and they can go at full speed. All right, so let's just do the lane mathematics going back the other way. So if we do two lanes through here. So control A, turn the key on. Sweet, all right, so now we've got two lanes coming on and two lanes going straight but it's going into three lanes. So again, we want to use a four lane highway. If you don't have a four lane highway, then maybe you can use one with more lanes than that. Uh, four lane highway. So maybe we'll put it for a couple of segments. So that gives enough time for people to then merge it down into three lanes, which is the normal one. If you wanted, you could just upgrade the whole highway to four lanes, but then you've got to keep doing it all the time. So I don't think it's really that useful. So just a couple of segments that gives people enough time to merge in and then they can figure themselves out afterwards. So again, let's use the lane connector tool to connect all of this up correctly. So um, actually, if you go um, control, click on that, go shift S, no, control S, and you can see it sets it all up automatically for you. Okay, control S turns it off, control S turns it back on. So people in the red lane only goes into this lane, people in that lane only goes into that one, once they've gone in here, they can then move freely at the next node to go where they want to go. Sweet, so that one's done. Let's have a look at the other places. So again, over here, we've got two lanes going into one. So we need to upgrade that into a two lane highway. Sweet, and then we've got four lanes merging together. So we want a four lane highway here for a couple of segments. Cool, use the lane syndic connector tool, control S, choose that one, go control S and it will do that automatically for you, awesome, so that's done, where else do we need to do it, um, over here, so I need two lane highway here, and then a four lane highway here for a couple of segments, set up the lane connector tools, shift A, control S, so remember you need to right click, once you've done that go right click to get off it and then you can click on the next one, control S, right click, sweet that one's done, is there any more left to go, yep over here, so even though we're not using it just yet, we might as well do that, and then we'll fix that up later on when we're ready to do that, now I think that's all of the turbine done, Everything else looks really cool. So if we unpause, and we'll just wait for the cars to kind of um, sort themselves out. So ready, unpause, and they'll start to sort themselves out. And there we go, they start to use our new turbine interchange. I think that looks really awesome. Uh, great looking feature, Timbo. Thank you very much for creating this particular interchange. And you can see that people are already wanting to use our off-ramp, our new interchange and service interchange over here and they can then connect to um, the farms or go into the city, whatever they happen to do and you can see now our trash has been collected. You can see we've got this symbol here, um, so what that symbol is is the um, citizens are sick, so there's still ground pollution, it takes a bit of time for the ground pollution to go away but eventually that will go away which is really nice. Doesn't that look cool? A beautiful new interchange, looks fantastic, um, and it just allows another entryway into our particular city. All right, so that's how we use the Move It mod. Um, 
really awesome tool how we can load in new interchange assets from the um, workshop and how we can start to build out our city and make more connections so having more different ways into the city means that we don't have any traffic bottlenecks where everyone's trying to get into the same particular um, area of the highway all right so that's it from me Raiga. hopefully um, you enjoyed that particular episode and i will catch you in the next one if you like that video please um, give it a thumbs up um, if you like my content please give me a subscription it just helps other people to find the um, videos as well it's much appreciated and if you have any comments or want me to explain anything else that you're not sure of um, feel free to leave them in the comments and i will include them um, in some future episodes all right that's it i'll catch you next time